just wanted to also say Nova hasn't even seen the statue herself, so this is a very exciting moment for her. Um, so I'd just like to introduce Nova, Jack and Destiny to take the curtain away. Nova, you want to have a little yarn? Yeah. So Nova, this isn't your typical bronze statue, it's incredible. Talk us through the base of the statue. Yeah, this statue, um, when Gilly and Mark wanted to, to do the statue, I said it was important because for all my sporting achievements, it wouldn't have been possible without the strength and resilience of those who have gone before me. And the base of the statue, normally statues are a square box, I've not come from a square box. My life has been one of, um, you know, challenges and adversity. And so when I spoke to Jandamara, um, I said, everything that makes me Aboriginal is the base of this, of this statue. And for the, the saltwater crocodile, that's our um, totem from the Buddhist, um, Gajadu and Iwaja, mob from up in the West Arnhem Land region. So that's our family totem. You've got the three flowers here. That's my mother and my grandparents, Nana, Nora and Johnny Perris, who are all members of the Stolen Generation. And the three the flowers um, which make up the, the Stolen Generation flower is the bush hibiscus. Mm -hmm. And it's grown throughout 90% of Australia and it's known for the strength and the resilience of the, of the, um, of the Stolen Generation flowers. Um, the the black-headed python is a prominent totem for us in, uh, in the Kimberley region. So my mob our east and west uh, Kimberleys, from the Yaru and the Gidja peoples. And of course, you've got the, the Boab tree. Um, you know, that's, that's me. I'm a Kimberley girl and I'm a West Arnhem Land girl. And so to get to this, I have everything here to be grateful for. And, and obviously, my, um, there was the, the mixed emotions of what sort of um, statue is it going to be a hockey player? Is it going to be someone in parliament or uh, me running and you know for me to go to the Olympics and the Sydney Olympics and run that was my first childhood dream was to run at the Olympic Games and you know and there I didn't get a gold medal but we broke an Australian records and got to run five times in front of 110,000 um, people which is a f phenomenal thing and this that actual pose is when I won Commonwealth Games um, coming off the turn and the uniform is the uniform that I wore at the Sydney Olympics and yeah the hockey stick is of the um, I guess we gave them photographs and they were able to capsulize that and and that's my Olympic gold medal which they've done an incredible job and which is now in the National Museum of Australia and so you know all that is, is me you know um, even when I had my portrait um, in Parliament House I I didn't wear any shoes and I'm sitting on the, the root of a, a tree. So, you know, irrespective of all the things that I've, I've done, I always try and remain humble and, um, you know, it's just, it's an honor to be able to, to serve your country and, and to represent your country. And, but it all comes from the hard work and, you know, for my own kids who have done remarkably well, I'm immensely proud of them. And sadly, my eldest daughter, Jess, couldn't be here today. She's in East Arnhem Land. She's, she's working away in the community stuff that she does. And, my little grandson Isaac, he's 12 years old. He came here in May when we were supposed to do the unveiling, and and uh, I said, "Come on, Isaac, we'll go back to Melbourne." He goes, "No, nah, no, nah, not going back to Melbourne ever again. Don't want to do my two weeks hotel quarantine again." So, poor fella. Um, but yeah, they couldn't be here today, and and uh, so you know, I just want to also acknowledge my husband Scott, who's also been my rock. Um, you know, I'm. Um, super busy all the time just never stop like destiny said and and i couldn't do the things that i did without uh without the, the stuff that he does behind the scenes and they say behind every good woman there's a greater man so thank you scott for everything that you do for me and the kids um but for me it's not just a statue of me it like i said it represents black excellence it, it, it represents 
any kid out there who dares to dream big. You know, you've got to have your dreams, you've got to have your aspirations in life. And this is, this is for all the mob. This is for all the Aboriginal children out there um, who are so super talented. I want them to see black excellence. Um, because there's not enough of us out there and there's a saying you can't be what you can't see and you know there's a lot of statues out there of the colonizers and we can't relate to that this we can relate to you know it's not just a black excellent statue but it's it's a woman statue it's a mother statue it's it's women who um, you know can achieve heights over adversity and and you know, keep waking every waking up every day and say, I can do it, I can do it. It's just perseverance. So, um, so many people told me I couldn't do it, and I'm I'm living proof that you, you can do it. And you know, I'm just blessed to have good people around me. And you know, my children's speech today, Destiny and Jack. Thank you, thank you to everyone who you know came and gave their heartfelt speeches today. Um, you know, it felt like I was at attending my own funeral there at one stage. <laughs> I'm 50 now. But anyway, thank you to, to everyone. And um, I'm truly humbled by everyone coming out here today. And, you know, and thank you to Federation Square. And thank you to the Wurundjeri mob and, and the Bunurong and the Kulin Nation mob. And hope that you can put some good spirits over to me and look after me at night time. And, uh, yeah, so um, I thank everyone. And... and uh, for being here and thank you. Thank you for inviting me to have a seat right here.